What's going on all of you fantastic freelancers? My name is William and I figured it was long overdue that I make this video. It's no secret Anthem has developed quite an interest from Bioware fans and newcomers alike. The Javelins look incredible, our recent look into Fort Tarsus has gathered intrigue, and the world is as vast as it is dangerous. However, not all of the dangers of this world come from the Shaper Storms, Towering Titans, and Wildlife. One of the most dangerous powers at play in Anthem's story just so happens to be the ancient enemy of the Freelancer Order, the Dominion. While we don't know too much about Anthem's lore, or the Dominion for that matter, they've inspired a serious interest by many Anthem fanatics. Like most everything else about Anthem, however, everything is slowly coming together and making more and more sense by the day. Or livestream, rather. If you are interested in the sources used in this video, feel free to check them out in the description below. But for now, sit back, relax, and enjoy. As I stated before, the Dominion have been described as the ancient enemy of the Freelancer Order, and to those who take shelter behind the walls of Fort Tarsus, their society has been known to be a fascist and militaristic one, led by a being known as the Monitor. The Dominion resides in their capital of Stralheim, which is located in northbound of Anthem's world, which apparently, according to Anthem's Wikipedia, they have been conquering the North with a vengeance. However, the North isn't the only thing the Dominion desires to control. While the Freelancers believe in protecting humanity at any cost, the Dominion desires subjugation of all of humanity under the watchful gaze of the Monitor. I'm getting some serious Autobot and Decepticon vibes right here. But how do they intend on achieving such an ambitious goal? Well, here's where things get really interesting and where the Dominion really shows themselves as a really prominent villain in the game. Much like the Scars, the Dominion desires to understand and control the relics left behind by the Shapers. The Shapers' relics have the ability to alter and transform anything and everything around them, as they have the power to wield the Anthem of Creation at will. With this power, the Dominion could decimate their enemies, control the very forces of nature, or better yet, modify themselves. Now, before your eyebrows raise any higher, hear me out. A few months back, during Anthem's Our World, Your Story panel, we learned that the Cyphers, like Fay and Owen, have the power of telepathy. Last I checked, that isn't normal, and that's because it isn't. Apparently, the Anthem of Creation has the ability to give beings inhuman abilities, like the Cyphers' telepathy, psychic-like powers, or even kinesis. Now, I want you all to remember kinesis for later on in the video. It would stand to reason if the Dominion has been around long enough to be called the ancient enemy of the Freelancer Order, then they would have been around long enough to study the Shaper's relics and learn a thing or two, such as telepathy. With a leader with a name like the Monitor, you would have to imply some form of, well, monitoring. And what better way to monitor your subjects than through the power of telepathy? Not to mention how much of a threat you would be to your enemies if you had the ability to perform telepathy against them. By every indication, the best we have, at least as far as using telepathy goes, are the ciphers, and at the time of this video, I don't see them weaponizing it or using it beyond communicating with us and providing intel. Perhaps we have developed a way to protect ourselves against unwanted telepathic attacks or communication. I am not 100% sure about this, and we're getting off topic. At any rate, it would stand to reason that the Dominion already has a decent grasp on telepathy, which, again, explains the Monitor, his militaristic and fascist grip on his society, and the Dominion as a whole. However, who is to say their understanding and grasp of the Anthem ends there? Remember how I mentioned Kinesis before? Well, they've definitely nailed that one, as shown in the fan-favorite Storm Javelin. In a previous video, I discussed how the Legion of Dawn didn't necessarily invent all four of the Javelin suits. They developed the Ranger, and maybe the Colossus with a small possibility of the Interceptor. But what about the Storm? Well, the Storm was definitely developed by the Dominion, which their original variant is known as the Valkyrie, and unlike the other Javelins, this suit utilizes a unique technology known as the Seal Technology. According to the Get to Know the Storm article on EA's Anthem site, the Storm Javelin first arrived in Fort Tarsus as a rumor, developed by the Dominion in their northern home of Strahlheim. The Storm uses a powerful technology known as Seals to boost the latent kinesis powers of its Lancer. The result is a Javelin that can float effortlessly above the ground and unleash the raw energy of the Anthem. Only through painstaking Arcanist research has anyone outside the Dominion had a chance to wield the awesome potential of the Seal technology. Now, let's pause here as this quote is a double whammy. Apparently, the Dominion knows enough about the Anthem of Creation to develop a technology like the Seal technology to not only boost the latent kinesis powers of its pilot, but also allow the user to unleash the raw energy of the Anthem. Red flags are waving like crazy right now. 
Now, this has been stated countless times before, but the javelins are handcrafted and not mass produced, so obviously it would take a while for this suit to be developed. As such, I doubt the Dominion or the Monitor, let alone, would allow just anyone to pilot one of these Valkyries, or Storm if you prefer. It would stand to reason they would only grant one of their most elite and most trusted to pilot such a force of destruction. That pilot would need some sort of kinesis potential, which could either happen at random, as is the case of most, if not all, ciphers, or granted to a pilot pilot via the Dominion's understanding of the Anthem and possible mutation. Obviously, the SEAL technology is impressive in and of itself, having the ability to bring out and enhance the wearer's latent kinesis capabilities and also allow them to wield the raw power of the Anthem. Apparently, the technology is so complicated and so unknown that, as mentioned before, that only through painstaking research has anyone even been able to receive a semblance of this technology's awesome power. But this brings me to my next point. Obviously, the Dominion are our mortal enemies, for more than just one reason. They want to subjugate and conquer. They command some incredibly dangerous technology, and their understanding of the Anthem far exceeds our own by every current accounting. However, thanks to Ben Irving and Mike Gamble's open world dev stream a little while back, we can now add a new item to the concern category. Yay. During that live stream, we got a closer look at the Dominion's roster of enemies that we can expect to see in game. Of course, there were your basic shock troopers and a Valkyrie here and there, but they also had animals. Actually, I think that is too gentle of a word. They had monsters, brutes, beasts, abominations, I could go on. The one that struck me the most was the Dominion Frost Brute that looked like some sort of troll with two cannons attached to its back. Actually, it kind of reminds me of Winston's Yeti skin from Overwatch. And yes, that reference was for you, Ryan. Their heavy cannons were able to do decent damage and provide a good amount of splash slash AoE damage, not to mention that they were a time and a half to take down. And then we had the Frost Hounds, which were about as large as a javelin, and they could cough up low to mid-range seeking ice shards slash balls. The point of me bringing up these beasts is they open a much wider door of possibilities, at least as far as indicating how powerful the Dominion really is. Now, these could have just very well been creatures located in the northern regions of Anthem's world that were captured and trained, but that seems a little too generic for the dominating Dominion. More likely, at least in the case of the Frost Brutes, they have been controlled via telepathy. Granted, this hasn't been confirmed or even shown as being a possibility, but seeing as a guy like Owen who went to the Community College of Cypher Schools can communicate with us from miles upon miles away, I'm all but certain telepathically controlling the beasts and strapping weapons to their backs are definitely in the cards. However, this possibility is too real not to mention it, and its likelihood, on the other hand, remains to be seen. Since the Dominion, by every indication, can manipulate aspects of the Anthem of Creation, as evident by the Monitor's potential telepathic control over his people, their understanding and ability to heighten latent kinesis potential, and not to mention developing a technology that unleashes the raw power of the Anthem, it would make sense that they could potentially create life, or, failing that, mutate life into those frost brutes, hounds, and who knows what else we will see when Anthem releases. One thing is for certain, though. We are in for one hell of a fight when it's time to suit up and take on the Dominion in February. This quote from Game Informer's Anthem article pretty much rounds up all the motive you really need to combat this malevolent force. You and your friends need to stop them, not because you're the chosen one, but because they're putting everyone's survival at risk. The Dominion wants to subjugate and control the Anthem freelancers. Are you ready to stop them? Before we go, did we miss anything in this video? Have any other theories about our ancient adversaries in the North? Leave a comment below to let us know what you think about the Dominion, and please let us know if you enjoyed the video. If you enjoyed our video, consider leaving a like and sharing it on social media so that we can reach more freelancers just like you. And a very special thank you to my loyal and generous patrons for all their kindness and support. So to you all, I wanted to again say a very big thank you. I hope all of you fantastic freelancers are looking forward to an amazing week, had a phenomenal day so far, and I can't wait to see you all in the next video very soon. Onwards and upwards, everyone. Excelsior.